for CA myotome, we will test fingers flexion. Uh, when doing this test for patients with spinal cord injury, we will specifically test the flexion of the distal interphalangeal joint of the middle finger. So, um, for grade 3, the upper limb is next to the patient, so the shoulder is in neutral uh, flexion extension, rotation, abduction, abduction. The elbow is fully extended, the forearm is supinated. The wrist and fingers are held in extension position. So here we could uh, provide the stabilization with a two-hand grasp by um, placing both hands like this, so that we are maintaining the wrist and all fingers in extension and the only uh, part that is free to move is the uh, distal interphalangeal joint of the middle finger. And we ask the patient to uh, flex this finger. So flex your finger. Okay, relax. Relax, relax, extend. Do it again, flex. Okay, so this is grade three. Uh, for grades four and five, we will put the distal interphalangeal joint. So it's the same placement. We will put the joint in uh, flexion and then we ask the patient to hold this position and not let me extend the uh, finger. So hold this position and I will provide the resistance here. So flex, okay. Don't let me extend the finger. And if the, um, if the resistance is moderate, then this is grade four. If the resistance is maximal, then this is grade five. If the patient was unable to do grade three to begin with, unable to flex the um, distal interphalangeal joint, then we will move into the gravity eliminated position. Before doing that, actually, there's another grasp to do grades four and five, which is with one hand by um, placing our hand like this. Uh, so we are uh, holding all um, joints in extension, and the only joint that is allowed to move is the distal interphalangeal joint. So please uh, flex your finger again. Okay, so this is uh, grade three. And um, when doing uh, grades uh, four, uh, three, four, five, uh, we need to pay attention to a substitution that can be used by many patients with spinal cord injury, which is called tenodesis grasp. We will talk about this later, but basically uh, the patient might accomplish some finger flexion by extending the rest. Um, and this is a common thing, like usually when we extend our uh, rest, um, we accomplish some flexion of the fingers and uh, in patients they use this as um, some form of a grasp. So uh, when doing the test, we need to pay attention that the rest is not moving and that we are stabilizing um, this whole area here. That was grades three, four and five. Now moving to grade two. For grade two, we will move into the gravity eliminated position and we simply do this by uh, moving the forearm into neutral position. Uh, so this way, the movement here now is in the gravity eliminated position. We provide the same stabilization to wrist and um, MCP and interphalangeal joints so that they are all in extended position. And we ask the patient to bend the distal interphalangeal joint of the middle finger. So bend that, okay, good. If the patient is able to do it, this is grade two. Uh, if the patient is unable to do it, which is full movement in the gravity eliminated position, if the patient is unable to do that, then uh, we um, uh, palpate the muscle either by palpating the tendon of the uh, flexor digitorum profundus um, next to the insertion here, or we try to palpate the, uh, observe the muscle belly and the muscle tendon next to the rest joint. Okay, do the movement, and I'll try to palpate here, okay. The substitution for um, the flexion in grade two could be by other finger flexor muscles, like the hand intrinsic muscles, or the uh, flexor digitorum superficialis, which accomplishes flexion at the proximal interphalangeal joint. So the patient is trying to flex the uh, proximal joint. Again, um, we pay attention to the substitution by making sure that only the intended segment is moving and we provide stabilization to all other segments.